Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and to the series where we aim to build our own chatbot with Rasa open source. In our first video, we took a gentle introduction to how we can spin up our own chatbot with a simple command. And in the second video, we've defined a project that we would like to implement the project requirements for. So if you haven't watched those videos, it's best to do so. In this video, we will be implementing the first project requirement for a good Kalo chatbot, which if you remember, is to raise the user's awareness of the different packages of good Kalo, which are the weekly meal plans of a single meal or two meals or three meals, as well as the monthly meal plan of a single meal or two meals or three meals. To do so, we will be following the following flowchart. First, we will define the intents, slots, and entities in the domain file. Then, we will be providing training data for the intents, that the new intents that we've defined, as well as the entities in the nlu.yml file. Then, we will define the responses to those new intents in our domain file, as well as define a custom action that will allow us to extract the entities. Finally, we will create stories to handle the conversation flow in our stories.yml file. And we will be creating two conversational flows in the stories.yml file for both conversational flows that we mentioned in our previous video, as well as modify the config and endpoints file to make sure that when training the, the Rasa bot, we are doing it in the most optimal manner. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to the code. Kindly note that in this video, we will be using the spun up Rasa chatbot, the basic chatbot, and build upon it. So let's start with the domain.yml file. As we've covered in our previous videos, here we specify the intents that we have already put in the nlu.yml file, as well as the responses. But in addition to those, we will be adding the entities and slots. As we would like to save the client's information to fulfill the second project requirement of registering any user to for a meal plan, we need to specify at least, as of now, two entities. One concerning the phone number, let's say the contact of the uh, client, and the second concerned with the full name of the customer. So we went ahead and defined them over here under entities. Now, as we will be storing these entities and we want to also remember these entities for later use we need to define the slots therefore over here we have defined each entity for the contact we've defined it as contact and for the name full name we've defined it as full name and we defined the type of the slot which in our case for both entities we will be receiving text so we've defined it as text. Of course, there are other types of slot information such as Boolean values or even categorical values. And you can check the Rasa documentation to choose the appropriate slot type for your specific use case. And we also need to specify that we would like the slot to influence the conversation. This is because, as you will later see, we would like the slot information to influence a story. Finally, we would like to specify how we will set the slot or how we will be acquiring the information. And we will be doing so through the mappings and we will be filling the slot through extracting it from entities. So the type of map mapping is from entity and the entity for this slot is the contact. Similarly for the full name. Now let's head over to the nlu.yml file and take a look at the training examples. As we will be working with a spun up chatbot using the command that we talked about in our previous videos, we have left some of the intents as they are and added two intents. The first is to specify the intent where the user states their name and contact information. And this is where we will be putting for the chatbot some training data that will assist the chatbot to identify the different entities that we have already defined in our domain.yml file. As you can see, the first intent is called name and contact. 
And we've put some examples here where we've specified different names. And for those names, we, we kept them in between square brackets. And we've also labeled that data as its uh, respective entity through parentheses. Similarly, for the phone number, we have kept some training examples for phone numbers through square brackets and specified the category for this entity as contact in between parentheses, as we've discussed in our previous video regarding intents and how we can specify them. The second intent that we have uh, created is what we expect the user to ask. Of course, the clients would like to understand good Kalo more. So we've kept some examples over here underneath the intent good cal that are related to uh, some, some ways the user may ask for more information about good Kalo. Now that we've added the intents we need, let's head back to our domain.yml file and add them over here. Now, of course, after specifying some training data for the ch chatbot to train upon, we also need to train it to respond to these new intents. So heading over to the uh, domain.yml in the same file, we've, we've modified one of the responses and added one as well. The first one is a response back to the user that greeted the chatbot. So we went ahead and modified the utter greet to say, Hey, welcome to Good Callow's customer service assistant. We'd like to get to know you first. And we ask the user or the, the customer for its name and contact number. The second response that we've added over here is a response to their question about Good Kalo. So here we've specified that Good Kalo offers one or two or three meals on a monthly or weekly basis. Now we need to define the action that will assist us in extracting the entities and responding back to the user. So we will head over to the actions.py and we went ahead and defined the following. The function is called action say, say name. And this will, when triggered, prompt the chatbot to look for two things, the person's full name and contact information. If the chatbot can't find the person's full name, the chatbot will respond with a brief overview of the uh, services of Good Kalo. If it did find its full name, it will go ahead and thank the user with its full name and also give a brief overview of Good Kalo. Now let's head over back to the domain file and also define that action in the domain file. Now that we have the actions, the responses, the entities and slots defined, let's tie it all together in the stories.yml file. So we talked about in our previous video about two conversational paths. So these two stories are related to those conversational paths. The first one is the typical path that is the optimal and most ideal, where the user will greet the chatbot and the uh, chatbot will utter a greet back asking the user her or his name and phone number then the chatbot will recognize that we have received a name and contact where the full name and contact for example is as follows and then we set the slots the chatbot will then set the slots and then automatically we call the action say name and then if the user asks about good Kalo, we will utter back to the user more about good Kalo. The second conversational path that we mentioned in our last video is if the user just straight ahead didn't even greet the chatbot, just asked about good Kalo, we will go ahead and utter more 
about Goodkalo to the user. It's important to specify in the config.yml file the pipelines that we will be using in extracting entities and setting them or saving them into slots. In our case, we will be using the diet classifier, which is a multitask transformer architecture that handles both intent classification and entity recognition together. It also provides the ability to plug pre-trained embeddings like BERT embeddings, just to name one of those embeddings. And I believe that it's enough for our use case. So after defining the pipeline, we will also look at our endpoints. And as we are using custom actions that we've defined in our actions.py, we will go ahead and uh, make sure that we define an action endpoint. We must run an action server separately from the Rasa server that we run through using the Rasa shell command. And we specify it over here in the URL of the action endpoint, where we will be running it on our local computer on the 5005 port. Now that we, we have specified all of these things, we can go ahead and train the chatbot using Rasa train. After the model has been fully trained, we will run the Rasa bot onto the port 8000 on debug mode. And we will open up another terminal and run the action server on another port, which we've also specified in our actions endpoint, which is 5005. So the action endpoint is up and running. And we will wait for the chatbot to to load and so that we can test our chatbot and make sure that the project requirements has been fulfilled. Going back to our last video, we specified two conversational scenarios that may occur. The first one is when the user, as we've specified in our stories.yml, creates the chatbot and has the typical conversational flow. Let's go ahead and test and see whether the chatbot has been fully trained on this type of conversational flows. As for the second scenario, the user does not create the chatbot, but automatically asks for what could Kalo offers. So let's go ahead and test for that as well. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found it useful. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through sub subscribing or through supporting us through Patreon. The link is in the description below. Stay tuned for the next videos where we will be looking at how we can fulfill the second project requirement and learn how to build our own Rasa chatbot. Thank you for watching.